Hi, this is Maria Williams. In this video, I'm featuring the Avery L Special Delivery Stamps and Dies, and I'll show you how I made these shadow box pop-up cards. Here's a look at the card that I made ahead of time. As you can see, it it is essentially a box inside of the card. The card lies flat so that you can mail it easily in a standard size envelope, but then it pops up when you open it. The card is made up of two different um, pieces of cardstock, and you can make the two pieces the same color or a different color like I'm doing here. I want the outside of my card to be pink and the outside to be white. So I started out with an 8.5 by 5.5 piece of a pink period cardstock and a piece of 80 pound Nina solar white cardstock that I've cut to the same size, eight and a half by five and a half. So basically two standard size card um, pieces of cardstock. The pink pirouette piece of cardstock is going on the outside and I'm going to score it at four and a quarter just like I would any standard card base. And the piece of um, Nina solar white is, <clears throat> excuse me, going to create the box. So I'm going to score it at half inch, four and a quarter inches, four and three quarter inches and then I'm going to trim a really small little slither, sliver excuse me off of the end um, where I scored it at half an inch. I'm also going to cut off a half inch piece of the pink pirouette cardstock from one of the sides. Now that I have the basic components for the card, I'm going to cut a piece of smoky slate cardstock with a My Favorite Things stitched rectangle die. This is the second largest. And it's from the A2 stitched rectangles stacks set one. They have a couple different sets. On the first card I made, I used die cuts on the front of the card as well as on the inside. But on the second card, I decided to make it a little easier and I stamped everything on the front panel and only used die cuts for the inside, for the shadow box. So um, I'm going to cut just one set of the um, flying stork and the little bundle with the baby and then I'm going to cut uh, two of each of the clouds for the inside of the shadow box. Lately I've gotten into a bit of a habit of uh, whenever I'm uh, doing stamping and die cutting, setting up all the stamps that I'm going to use into my um, stamp positioner and die cutting them with my piece of cardstock all the way into one of the corners. That way if I decide I want to do a second card or multiple cards or I get one of the die cuts messed up, all I have to do is die cut the um, whatever piece I need and run it through my die cutting machine and then just pop it into the piece of cardstock that I used to die cut all the pieces the first time. And you'll, this will make a little bit more sense in a moment. But that is why I am die cutting um, the shapes with no stamping done. So here is my stamp positioner. I'm using a Stamparatus from Stampin' Up! Today and they're all my stamps on the lid and then the piece of cardstock that I cut my die cuts from the first time and then I have a piece of paper and then I have a grid that I prepared for myself. It's just a piece of um, Stampin' Up! grid paper and I just cover it in contact paper. I don't have a large laminator so I find that the contact paper sticks really well and it's really easy to clean and it's inexpensive to buy a whole roll. So I can make a new um, grid uh, sheet for myself anytime. And the reason I need it is because when you take out the foam pad, you can see the grid on the um, bottom of the stamparatus. But if you have the foam pad in to use with your clear stamps, you don't have a grid. Once I have my um, piece of cardstock with the opening set up with a magnet so that it doesn't shift. I am putting all my die cuts back into the open spaces and then I'm going to take some smoky slate Stampin' Up! ink and ink up the stamps and go ahead and close the door and then I will take them all out and put in the two extra clouds that um, I die cut even though I'm just using one and um, go ahead and stamp that too. The front panel of my card is cut to approximately three and three eighths by four and five eighths. And I'm using smoky slate ink again to stamp everything. And I stamped the stork first. And then I wanted the tails of the balloons to be a little bit longer. I thought they were a little bit short. So I'm inking up only the tails of the balloon. And then I'm going to stamp that below the beak of the stork. 
And then I'm going to ink up the whole thing, the balloons and the strings, and stamp them right above, making sure to line them up in such a way that they look like they're obviously continuing, that they're one solid piece of string. I decided to start coloring here and I'm using Copic markers and I used um, RV02, RV04 and V01. Um, they're pretty light colors. Um, on the previous, on the first card I used um, some more intense colors so I thought I would do one that was a little bit more subtle. So I used RV02 and RV04 for the balloons and I really didn't do any shading. On the first card I did do a little bit of shading um, but on this one I I just um, colored everything in very basically, trying to get even as even coverage as I could. Um, the only place where I did do some shading was on the body of the stork. So first I colored the sweater with um, V01 and RV02. I had already made myself a sample to make sure that I like the color combination. And I decided to give the scarf a little bit of detail, so I colored it in with RV02 and then um, drew in some lines with V01. And besides the grays that I used for the body and the wings of the stork, um, I just used YR00 for the legs and the beak, and I used C1 and C3 for the body of the stork and for the wings of course. So I started out with the wings and um, I filled in the lower part of the wing uh, with, actually there's only one wing, I don't know why I said wings, but anyway I, I filled it in with uh, C1 and then um, went back in with C3 around just the lower edge to create a little bit of a, a little bit of shading and then I colored the lower part of the rest of the wing with C1 and then came in with C which is the um, uh, I think it's called the colorless blender I think that's what it's called and just kind of um, moved the color a, a little bit so that it would um, be just really light and kind of fade into the white at the top of the wing. I did kind of the same thing on the lower part of the body that's peeking out underneath the sweater and also around the neck area and around the head adding the um, the gray kind of toward the back of the neck, the back of the head, um, right underneath the hat and just kind of blended all that out with the zero Copic marker. Next I took the two clouds from the stamp set and stamped them in smoky slate ink to fill in some of the space and um, I needed a little bit more, um, a little bit of something to fill in the rest of the space so I decided to use a little um, star cluster. At that point I realized that I had that smudge on my card and that it wasn't going anywhere but I decided to ignore it for now and keep on going. And then I grabbed my um, sand eraser and erased away, um, but it still didn't want to come off. So once again, I decided to leave it and keep going. So I took um, B00 and colored in the bottom of the clouds. And same as before, I used a zero Copic marker and just kind of blended out the color a little bit so it wouldn't be just one thick line on the bottom of the clouds. And I also previously, I obviously edited it out, um, did some, um, a little bit of ground underneath the stork just with the C1 and the C3, just some light strokes, um, just some kind of dots and small lines. I didn't have any cardstock that matched the RV04 marker and I really wanted to um, white heat emboss the sentiment so I just took a Copic marker and just um, colored in a section of uh, Nina White um, cardstock, um, just white enough for my sentiment and then I used my embossing buddy to make sure that it was all dry and my powder wouldn't go anywhere where I didn't want it to go and then I used some Versamark ink, inked up my congratulations stamp and stamped it right over the cop Copic colored cardstock. I then added some white embossing powder and heat set it with my heat tool and then I decided to trim it by hand rather than using any kind of a die. So I took my paper trimmer and uh, trimmed along the top edge of the word congratulations. 
Then I flipped the strip over so that I could trim along the bottom of the word. And because the strip was so narrow, I was having trouble holding it in place. So I took a couple of pieces of post-it um, tape and put it on the top of and the bottom of the paper strip. And then just trimmed from the bottom of the strip up to the G and then from the top of the strip down to the G. So basically leaving all the cardstock around the G intact. Then I took some scissors and cut around the G. And then um, finally, if you have a um, banner punch, you can use that to cut the fishtail at the end of the congratulations. And if you don't, you can just trim it with your scissors. And then I just um, cut the side next to the C straight down. And here's how you use the banner punch to cut the fishtail. The idea is that you only want to put the end of the um, strip of paper into the punch. You don't want to just stick it in through the side because then you'll just get a small banner. But if you just stick the end through the um, banner shape, it will only cut the fishtail. All the pieces for the front of my card are ready, so I'm going to go ahead and assemble it, although I'm not going to attach it to the front of the card yet until I put the box little mechanism together. So I'm just using some multi-matte medium from Ranger and um, gluing the banner um, straight onto the card. And if I were just making a regular card, I probably would have put um, dimensionals or um, foam tape behind this. But since there's going to be a fair amount of bulk because of the shadow box, I'm just using glue here. For the inside of the card, I've gone ahead and colored all the pieces using the same color markers that I used before. For the baby bundle, I use V01, and for the little bow, I used RV04. Um, and I did stamp on the little bundle the It's a Girl from, with the stamp from the same stamp set. And then um, it's time to cut the circle into the shadow box. So. Um, I'm going ahead and um, placing, and I could have separated these dies, but um, I wanted to make another card before I separated them, and it's not going to hurt anything to leave them there. So I'm going ahead and putting this Everyday Circles dies uh, right in the center of my box that's going to go inside. And notice that I am placing it um, on the large panel that is next to the half inch score mark. I'm using a little bit of post-it tape to secure it so that it doesn't shift when I run it through my Big Shot and then I'm just going to go ahead and die cut it. The stork's legs are a little bit too long to fit inside the shadow box so I'm just going ahead and clipping um, basically the feet off and that'll make it fit perfectly and I'm just going to attach it to the side of the circle with some multi map medium. I'm going to put a little bit on the front of the legs and also a little bit um, behind the um, tail feathers um, and I'm placing the tail feathers on the front of the circle. And I do realize that technically that wouldn't be possible, but I thought for purposes of the card it just looked a little bit better to have um, the image overlapping the circle. So I'm just playing around with the positioning a little bit, just making sure that the bundle is going to fit. And then um, I'm just holding the legs on the inside of the circle so that I can put the um, glue on the outside behind the tail feathers and that'll hold it in place. And then I flipped it over and put the glue on the legs inside of the shadow box. Okay, now here's a step that you could totally skip, but I, I have a thing about <laughs> die cuts that overlap sometimes and I just felt like I wanted the bundle to look like it was inside the beak of the stork. So I just took my X-Acto knife and cut a slit along the um, stamped image just wide enough that I could um, place the bundle inside of the beak. Then I just flipped it over um, because I really don't think that it would hold um, just like that. So I just added a little bit of glue trying to get some underneath and making sure I put some around the edges as well. 
To finish off the inside of the shadow box, I took the clouds that I had already die cut and um, colored a little bit and eyeballed where they needed to go and then used some multi matte medium to glue those down. And then like I did on the front of the card, I used the star cluster and stamped it three times just kind of randomly to fill in the space a little bit. The last bit I did was to um, stamp and die cut this banner that says welcome to the world and I just again attached it with glue so as to not create any more dimension. Now I'm going to create the actual shadow box so I'm just adding some score tape to the um, half inch section on the left side of the shadow box panel. And I'm adding some tape runner to this um, large panel that is going to be attached to the inside of the card. Since it's a larger area, I didn't feel like I had to use the score tape, um, but you do want to make sure that the tape runner you're using is fairly sturdy. Now, Jennifer McGuire, who inspired me to make this particular card, wraps her um, shadow box around the card like I just showed and then puts a panel inside but I decided that in order to avoid that extra panel on the inside I would just do mine this way and I will have a link to her video on my blog. So um, once you've attached the panel to the inside of the card you can just fold the card fold the shadow box in half close the card and the card is um, all done or I should say the shadow box part of the card is done and then you still have to just attach the front panel to the front of the card and then the card is complete. At this point I still had the issue of the smudge on the front of my card next to the balloon strings so I took some um, small star sequins that I had in my stash and decided to add a few scattered around the card front. So rather than take, seeing this as a big mistake, this was an opportunity to add a little extra bling to my card. I ended up scattering uh, five stars um, on the front of the card and then I took my Nouveau Shimmer Pen and I was only going to color a couple of things but in the end, not color, but add shimmer, but in the end the whole stork got it, the balloons, the um, clouds and also all the bits and pieces on the inside of the card. And then since I really liked the addition of the small um, silver star sequins, I went back to the original card and added five stars onto that too, as well as a whole lot of Nouveau Shimmer Pen. So finally, my two cards were finished. I really like the way these turned out. I think the shadow box is a nice little surprise when you open the cards and there's so much um, of a shadow in there with all the um, die cuts attached to the front of the window. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you will give these cards a try sometime and I will have links to Jennifer McGuire's video and to all the supplies on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.